Hey everyone, I'm Rick with Techspin, and we've been hard at work behind the scenes here with a custom paint job for the nice case that Enermax sent us. Between Enermax and MSI, consumers can actually achieve a fully white build, so I thought, let's go for it and see what can be done with the right components. So to prep the case, I had to remove the front and top and take out the grill from inside the top and the metal panel covering it. For the front, I removed all the wiring, grills from both sides and unscrewed all the buttons and carefully removed the case logo. And remove all the buttons from the case front. It was originally black, but I used a coat of gray first and let it dry. Here you can see just one coat of white over the gray and I don't cover everything in one coat. White tends to take longer than other colors to dry up to 20 minutes depending on temperature and humidity. If you put down too much paint at once, your paint will run, which is a pain to fix. You'll need to clean or sand it off and redo it. The main case had just one coat of gray with a touch-up coat, and I gotta say, it looked really nice already like this. I almost wanted to stop and try a silver build. <laughs> the gray dried quickly and was super easy to work with, and I did all sides and angles, which takes some time to dry in between. I left the bottom for last, and did the sides first so I could lean the case back. And if you want to try this, you'll need a well-ventilated area and use a mask. Even a medical one will help to keep paint out of your nose. Hangers are great for painting smaller pieces. You can get the front and back easily, just careful that the hanger doesn't scratch the paint. The gray case is all ready to go. Make sure you paper the area. I've used newspaper before, but construction paper works much better. This is the second time I'm painting with white, and white spray paint is difficult to work with since it shows the color underneath. Don't spray white over black as it takes five to six coats of paint to make it look really white. Using gray or gray primer first, the result is much easier to achieve with just two coats of white after the gray fully dries with minimal touch-ups. The gray coat dries fast too, about 10 minutes and it was ready. You can check by touching a not important surface very softly. You can see if the paint is tacky or dry. You shouldn't move freshly sprayed pieces, but even after it dries, be super careful moving them or you get smudges, which are hard to fix. And since the paint is already dry on this piece, I'm using 600 grit wet sandpaper to gently grind down the corner so it's flat. Ideally, I'd be using some power tools, but this has to get finished as soon as possible. Time and patience, and be careful with the sandpaper. If you're OCD, painting cases is probably not for you. <laughs> for me, I want to do the best paint job possible, and if I do that, I call it finished. Off camera, I'm running my thumb over the spot. It should be perfectly flush if done right. I'll rinse to clean the area. This turned out okay, but I still feel with some small power sander tools, it would have worked better. Anyways, it's the best I can do, so it's time to move forward. Using newer cloth towels to softly pat the surface first and a hair dryer, you can get the piece ready to be painted again quickly, but it has to be bone dry. Clean newer hand towels are better as you don't want lint on your surface you're gonna paint. Also heating up the surface, the paint can become tacky again, so don't touch or bump it. So this took about two days time, with one full day on Sunday pretty much, and uh, with work stoppages for real life things like sleep, a uh, real job, and getting food. The front, back, and side turned out well too, I think. I'm not worried about a perfect job inside the power supply and the hard drive area, as it won't be visible, but I did get some white in there. Now my actual install is happening Friday, as there is a difference between dry paint and cured paint, which takes three to seven days. Inside the case, it turned out really well. I did have a problem spot, but from most angles, you can't really see it. I've already put the motherboard standoffs back in carefully. This is so much easier using a gray coat first, and wow, the end result is really stunning. We're using an i3-8100 for the build. You should always ground yourself by touching metal surfaces before and during working on your computer. Uh, touch metal before you touch any components, obviously. To install, First, we'll release the CPU cover using the lever. 
then lift the cover. Align the notches at the top with the socket and place it down. The CPU text will normally be facing up as you look at the board upright. Wiggle slightly just to make sure it's properly in the socket. Next, lower the cover and make sure it fits under the holding screw at the bottom. Push the lever down and the top will pop up. Putting the lever in will take more force than before. Remember to save the socket cover in case you need to return the board or you feel like selling it in the future. If you're using an Intel cooler, then it can be a little tricky to get the tabs locked in properly, but you can do it with a bit of patience. The cooler won't be loose if you've done it right. And then plug in the CPU cooler. We picked up a stick of KingMax DDR4 8GB 2400 memory for 78 bucks and a KingMax M.2 NVMe Gen 3 256GB SSD with 1600 meg read and 850 meg write speeds for $65. Not the fastest, but over three times as fast as a regular SSD. For the fastest, you can choose an ADATA SX8200 240GB with 3200 meg write and 1100 read speeds for 100 bucks or the King, the Samsung 970 EVO 250 gig with 3400 read and 1500 write speeds for $110. Or you could get a double capacity 500 gig with 3400 read speed and an improved 2300 write speed for 230 bucks. Always check the module installation guide in your motherboard's manual to get the best performance and the least amount of issues. Here it says to install just one module in slot two. So let's get to it. Tab out the clips. Some motherboards, the bottom clip won't move, just FYI. Line up the notch and press down firmly to install. Installing an M2 drive is easy. First, we measure the SSD. The standoff to the left is too far away. So we need to move it to the correct position. By the way, on the SSD, the printed label will usually be facing you. Wiggle in the M2 at a 45 degree angle should be pretty easy and carefully press down. Inside this motherboard's accessories in a single plastic bag is a special screw. Don't lose it. And we'll secure the M2 drive. All done. Please take a moment to like this video. And if you like what you see, then please do subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when I upload new content. For our build though, we're using the Enermax ETS T50 we already reviewed. Check the link where we cover the installation. It's a perfect match for this build and also an excellent performing cooler for your CPU. First, we hook up the ATX 8 pin. Some cables have a four plus four configuration. Match the hook with the tab. Next, connect up the ATX 24 pin and make sure the tab presses down so it's locked in place for testing. To remove, Press on the back of the tab so it clears and then wiggle the connector up and off. Finally, switch the power supply on. You can turn on the motherboard by connecting the power switch leads with a screwdriver. The power leads are the two I'm pointing out here. They match the legend to the right. Be super careful not to touch any other components or you can fry your board. You should always test your setup before installing it into the case. So that's installing the CPU, applying thermal paste if needed, the CPU cooler, memory, an M2 or SATA SSD for Windows, and motherboard power. Test with onboard graphics first before using any graphics cards. Always disconnect power and wait 10 seconds before adding or removing hardware. From now on, I will use a towel for all my work on the case as the paint is still fairly new and can of course scratch or chip and I'll take care as I put the hardware in. Standoffs in and check they match the board. First, we install the IO cover. Next is the motherboard, and checking that we have clearance for the ATX A pin, we'll put in all the screws. Since we're doing a custom build, I've pre ordered custom white cables to match. First, the Enermax Revel Bronze 700 watt power supply will go in, and I'm attaching it with screws on the back. Next, the ATX A pin power goes in, then the 24 pin main power onto the board. I like to do the 8 pin first as occasionally you'll have issues with some case designs, but not this one. Next we'll move on to the top case fans, which install easily. Snapping the top panel back into place is easy and needs to come first before the front panel. And before we do the case connectors, we should sort out these front fans. These are Cluster Advanced White 120mm fans, which were kindly all sponsored by Animax. We're finished with the front so we can carefully put it on. 
Try to put the panels on just once to minimize damaging the new paint. And then we'll need to hook up the front panel connectors. I find working left to right is a bit easier being right-handed. Power and hard drive light are on. Then the power switch and reset switch. The Revobron 700 watt comes with this Cooler Genie unit, which connects in between the CPU cooler and the CPU fan port. It has Velcro or magnetic strip options, which we'll choose to lightly secure it inside the case. If you have more fans than motherboard headers and don't have a Cooler Genie, you can always pick up a PWM fan hub with either four or eight fan capable variants. Then attach cables onto the system fan ports on the motherboard. Make sure your front panel USB 3, USB 2, and audio connectors are all connected up to the motherboard first. Then it's time to connect the bottom two case fans. With any fans or fan hubs you hook up, you'll need to go into the BIOS and set all your system fans to PWM, as most motherboards default will be DC mode, so they'll run loudly at full speed and LEDs may not show full brightness. This way you'll get quieter and bright LED case fans. If you have SSDs or hard drives, now is the time to hook those up too. Always have the power supply turned fully off. Never connect drives with the power on, otherwise you can fry your drive circuit board. Ask me how I know. Anyways, these Transcend SSDs have the graphic the wrong way around, as the connector here is actually on the right side. Transcend! Ugh. I will write them and tell them after the episode. We had a discussion at Techspin and ultimately decided not to paint the grills white as we thought they would accent the case grills and match the buttons. And it turned out fairly well, I think. So here's the original case and the newly painted case. The original finished build and the new all white build. I'm pretty impressed with the end result. It turned out pretty well, I think. Of course, with different cases and components, your results may vary, but this is mostly just to give you some ideas about what you can do with just a bit of effort and time. I really hope you enjoyed this how to paint and build a PC guide. It took me several weeks of planning and about a week total to paint, assemble, and film everything. And of course, a big thanks go to Enermax for sponsoring the Revobron 700 watt power supply, the ETS T50 Axe white CPU cooler, and all the case fans without which this guide would not have been possible. And if you have questions about the build, uh, design, or components, then please let us know in the comments and we'll try to answer as many as we can. We always like to hear your ideas for upcoming episodes, so feel free to let us know what you'd like to see next. Please hit that thumbs up button if you like this video or tell us how we can improve for next time. To see more videos like this, please do subscribe for new content and be sure to click that bell icon to get notified when we put up a new video. We always check the comments and we respond to most. So if you have a question or if we miss something, then please do tell us down below and let us know what you'd like to see next. Thank you all very much for watching and see you again soon. Bye for now.